Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the upper radiator hose on a Hyundai Santa Fe 2003 minus the 3.5 liter six cylinder engine, which was available from 2003 to 2006 in the Santa Fe. So this upper rad hose should do the trick for you. I'll put a link to it in the video description below. Uh, I paid $16.37, uh, but you know, understand that the, the price of this will vary over time. But I will put a link to the exact same supplier that uh, sent me this hose. Uh, and I've already test fitted it. It's perfect size. It will work exactly as it should. Now, uh, if your uh, rad hose is leaking, if it's bulging, if it's ballooning, if it's got cracks on it, uh, if it has a pinhole on it and there's fluid uh, coming out of it, or if it's leaking from either end, which is the most common leak and the one I had, uh, you need to replace the hose, okay? Now I did what I call a bush fix. Uh, it was leaking from one end and all I did was basically cut a section of the uh, hose off because there's enough length in the hose to stretch it to get it to go. Uh, and that sealed, that sealed it for me. But once you find a leak, even if you do something like that bush uh, fix that I did, you need to replace the hose. That hose is gone. It shouldn't be leaking at all. And the fact that it is leaking, it's telling me that it's failed and it's old and it's gotta go. So I'm gonna show you how to replace it. I will also show you what, uh, you know, what I did with the old one to repair it for a couple days to get me through till I got this one. Okay, before we get into the repair, I wanted to show you the failure of the hose and that this is the end of the hose that I cut off uh, in order to repair it, what I call, do what I call the bush fix. So basically what I did is I took the hose that's currently on the car and cut off the uh, end section of it, okay? And because the hose has a bit of extra length in it, I can just push the, the, the hose the extra uh, distance that I needed and then connect it again. But obviously the hose is failing so you know I don't you don't want to keep it that way and there's a reason that the hose is a certain length the reason that the hose is that length is because it's engineered to be the correct length and the motor does move inside the engine uh, compartment which means that it's going to put tension on that hose uh, either towards the rad or away from the rad as it moves and if the hose is not long enough it's going to put too much tension on the connectors causing damage so if even if you do the bush fix which is what basically cutting the uh, the uh, affected part of the hose off and reconnecting it make sure you, you replace it because you know you've shortened the length of the, the hose okay so what was the damage on this? Well, you see all this, all this white stuff in here. This is corrosion. It's from something they call electrochemical degradation, okay? And that's something that happens uh, inside your cooling system because of basically different metals in it and uh, some electricity running through the system at the same time. And that causes this kind of corrosion. But you'll see here, right there, let's see if I can get you a better picture of it great big hole uh, so there we go that's better you see that it has a great big divot in it right here and I'll, I'll, I'll turn this around so you can see and basically all this corrosion uh, causes you know water to leak through and of course when that happens uh, then your coolant starts leaking out and that's what happened to me so especially right here look at that and so I, I you know I took it and cut this piece off and then I obviously I uh, sanded the uh, collar that this uh, connects to off so it's nice and smooth and I'll show you that when we're when we're repairing it but my reason for showing you this is because this is the most common failure of uh, uh, a radiator hose okay and uh, basically the Gates company the people I bought the uh, hose from uh, actually are have designed a hose that is uh, electrochemical uh, resistant so it, it basically uh, it, it resists electrochemical degradation. You can see the Gates hose here. And, you know, I wasn't going to point this out, but then I, 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 did, I read up on it and I said, you know, that's interesting and important. Here's why it's important. Because if you get a hose that doesn't have ECR or electrochemical resistance, as this hose does, then this is likely to happen to you again. So, uh, personally, I'm glad I bought this hose because of that, number one. Number two, because I learned what this is. It's not... A failure of my coolant it's 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 a failure of the hose so uh, that's bonus now the other thing I noticed about the gates uh, hose compared to the OEM I believe 
is that it is a much thicker hose. If you can see here, you can see how much thicker that hose is. It's about a millimeter th thicker. Uh, the inside diameter is correct though. If you take it and you go like that, you see, if I can get you a view of it. Anyways, you can see that the diameter on the inside is the same. I can measure it out and I have measured it and the inside diameter is the same. So I get a thicker hose. Uh, so that's a bonus. That means, you know, thicker usually means stronger. So more rubber, number one. Number two thing that the thicker uh, outside diameter does is that these, uh, this hose, if you can see the imprint of it, it has what they call a constant tension um, clamp, okay? So, uh, or hose clamp. And what that does is it basically, it's not a, a screw on, tighten it down kind of hose clamp. It's a, a, a spring that you, you know, uh, hardened steel spring that you can compress and then uncompress. And then it puts a constant tension all the way around the hose. Well, if you have a larger diameter outside uh, on your on your hose what the, what's that going to do to the spring it's going to make it tighter and harder and it's going to compress uh the hose you know better uh on the connection so all the way around i strongly suggest getting a gates uh brand of uh, hose and i will put a link in the video description below for that uh and it's 17 dollars or 16 dollars and 25 cents something like that at amazon well worth the money and uh, i do recommend that you buy a Gates hose. And by the way, this hose is made in the United States, which was kind of surprising. Changing the upper rad hose means that you'll spill some of this uh, uh, coolant that's inside your engine and uh, you'll need to replace that. And I use only the Hyundai uh, Long Life Coolant Antifreeze. I'll put a link to it in the video description below. The part number is 02, sorry, the part number is 00232-19010. And as I said, there'll be a link in the video description below and you can get it at Amazon or eBay, depending on where I find it. And basically just click on that and you'll, find, you'll get it from the same suppliers that I usually buy it from. Now, this stuff is poisonous. So if you spill it, make sure you clean it up. Don't leave it lying around for your pets or your kids to play with. Clean up any mess and be uh, responsible with it. Uh, also, understand that this is uh, straight coolant. It's not a mixed. There's no mix to it. So it, they recommend that you mix this 50 50 I always use distilled water to mix my coolant So whatever you put in just mix it 50 50 with distilled water And again, I'll put a link to the distilled water in the video description and any other tools that I use in this video will also be linked down there um, And as I said mix it uh, to your accordingly to what you need. They recommend 50 50 but there is a chart here that actually shows you the different uh, mix levels uh, for uh, your, your temperatures of, of operation. So if you wanna uh, vary it according to your conditions, that chart there will help you. So my second warning, and this applies to anybody doing this on any car, and that is never work on a hot engine. Make sure your engine is room temperature, mine is. Uh, we wanna release the pressure in the uh, system, but like I said, make sure your engine's cool. Uh, as the uh, coolant in your car is actually very hot if your engine is still hot and it can actually cause burns So do not work on the hot engine. Mine's cool. And what we want to do here is release the pressure in the uh, Cooling system and the way you do that is just by releasing the cap Turning it till it stops and then lifting it off now if this was hot it would spray hot uh, gas and, and coolant all over the place so uh, again don't do that with the engine hot just open it up release the pressure, uh, put the cap back on, and then tighten it back down again. Uh, we will refill what we lose, but I like keeping the cap on it because I seem to lose less coolant that way. So next step after that is to remove this engine cowling here on, on my uh, Santa Fe's, take that off. Now, you may be able to do this without removing this, this cowling, but it's only four bolts, one here, 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 and here. And all you need is a 10 millimeter, uh, socket with a with an extension and a driver and you can get all those all four of those off uh, mine did have some uh, collars in there metal collars with uh, rubber grommets and uh, on mine somebody replaced the rubber grommets with uh, o-rings so careful when you're taking those off not to drop them into the engine uh, just take one at a time off and then uh, put it away uh, i've already removed all four so uh, assume that you're you, you can do that without being shown how to do that just turn them counterclockwise and remove them and uh, the bolt will look like that and the spacer you can see right beside it there and uh, mine they were using o-rings on it so 
uh, regardless, there's a rubber grommet on every hole. So, uh, assuming you've taken that off, all you gotta do after that is just lift it off and put it aside. So we'll do that. And there now you have access to the engine compartment and the engine itself. So the upper rad hose is right here, as you can see. And basically what you should do is test and see if you've got the, uh, the a right fit for your new hose. And from what I can tell, it looks pretty well perfect. So, uh, and you know, you might say, well, Richard, that looks different than the one you have. Well, remember I took about uh, two inches off the end of this hose. So that sort of changed the shape of it. So next thing we need to do is remove this hose. I just double check to make sure that the orientation was right. And even if it's a little long, we can always cut a little bit off of it, uh, off either end to shorten it up. Uh, I can't compare it with the uh, piece that I took off and the hose after I get it all off and uh, you know make sure I get the right size. But I'd rather have it a little too long than too short, for sure. Which is currently what this one is, a little too short. Next thing I'm gonna do is pinch this hose clamp uh, closed. I'm gonna use a pair of needle nose uh, vice grip pliers uh, locking pliers, but uh, they do actually make clamps to do this so that will not damage the hose But I'm not even the least bit concerned about that because I'm replacing this hose So I'm just going to use these and I'm going to pinch it up a little bit There a little further up and the reason I'm doing that is to stop any leakage or to stop uh, as much leakage as possible from the pipe uh, When I remove it here, so there we go. It's pinched down next I'm going to remove the uh, hose clamp which is right there that's the constant clamp and if you have a screw on type you have to unscrew it but this one is a, a pinch type all I need is a, a pliers to uh, take it off or remove it so hopefully you guys can see that you just squeeze the ears or tangs like so and then it moves easily and I'm moving it up on the hose once you get it past that you should be able to pull that hose off that uh, coupling at the top. So let's do that next and you will spill some here. So be careful wear your eye protection so on Here we go and As you can see some fluid did come out as you can see I have it up and released So next I'm going to use a little container there to drain what's in the pipe into the container So that I won't make so big a mess. So I'll just remove the clamp here There we go. Put the container under it. There we go. And put that clamp back on here. All right, there's what was in the pipe. Hopefully you guys can see that. There we go. Put that aside and uh, I'm not going to reuse that stuff, by the way. It could have contamination in it from uh, the corrosion that was on the inlet pipe here. Uh, originally, there is none there, but I sanded it all off. But uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, next, we're going to detach the hose from the top end uh, of the rad right here. Now we're looking at the top end uh, of the top rad, of the upper rad hose. It's hooked into the actual radiator here. And uh, I'm just going to pull that, that uh, uh, clip off and then wiggle the hose off and show you what we got there Same procedure just use your pliers There we go Move the clip on the hose careful with your fingers like So I should do it and now just wiggle that hose off of there. Let's do that. And more than likely there'll be some more fluid in that. So let's see. Let's get the rad. Oh no, not too bad. A little bit came out. You can hear it hitting my drop sheet. A little bit on that. There we go. So drain the hose and then we'll compare the two hoses. Looking at the two hoses, you might think that the new hose, which is the one on the bottom, is much longer than the other one. Actually, it is not. Uh, I'll show you why here. I'll show you what 
how you know. I put it on top, the old one on top. There we go. And then the other piece uh, there. And you can see that's to maybe a you know, quarter inch, maybe a half inch uh, bigger or longer. Uh, that's perfectly acceptable to me. No issue at all. So that should be able to fit without any problem whatsoever uh, on the vehicle. So let's get that on the car next. Actually, let's just take a look at the connection points and make sure they're okay on your car. So that's the inlet pipe for the uh, hose right here. And when I originally took it off, there was a lot of corrosion, uh, much like what you see behind where the actual pipe connects right there. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of metal that is, maybe aluminum, but it did have a lot of corrosion and you saw the uh, crust of the corrosion on the inside of the uh, piece that I cut off. Uh, if yours has corrosion all the way around, uh, do yourself a favor, use some sandpaper and uh, just sand off the excess uh, 80 grit will do just fine. Uh, maybe a hundred if you want to be a little more safe with it, but uh, basically make it smooth all the way around. And uh, while you're doing that, uh, just stuff a rag in the uh, pipe like this to keep any debris from falling into the engine or into the coolant and then going back into the system. So sand that down a bit. I may give it a little bit more of a sanding. There's still some, a little bit of corrosion there. And uh, then we're, uh, then I'll put the pipe back on. Now, uh, the, Radiator side is made out of plastic, so there's no need to worry about corrosion on it as plastic does not corrode. So I sanded and cleaned that inlet pipe. I just used some uh, 100 grit sandpaper and, uh, you know, basically just sanded it down till it looks like what it looks like right now. It's very smooth all the way around. The uh, exterior corrosion and uh, has been taken off. Uh, you know, there's slight staining there, you can see it, but it's more than good enough and it, it will seal the new pipe nicely. Uh, basically, sand it down, get all the corrosion off of it, and then, you know, wipe it down with a, a rag or something to get all the sandpaper material off of it, and it's ready to go. Uh, next thing to do is just to wipe down the uh, inlet collar to the radiator. I'll show you that. There's the inlet collar and you can see a little bit of dirt around it. So. Uh, I'm, it's made out of plastic, so be careful with it. It's not, it's not as strong as a metal. Uh, I'm going to wipe that down and make it clean. So I wiped that clean. It looks good. It's nice and smooth. That's the inlet pipe on the radiator. Uh, next, we're uh, ready to put the, the new upper rad hose onto the uh, car and then uh, basically top up the radiator and I'll show you how to check your levels of fluid after that. So next we replace the hose clamps. We put them from the old pipe onto the new pipe and try more or less get the ears in the same spot. Make your life a lot easier when you're putting them back on. You want them facing you. So let's take those off of there. So there we have the correct orientation of those hose clamps. This is the engine side. You can see that it's pointing basically, the, the ears are pointing straight up. And uh, on, the drive, on the driver side, on the uh, radiator side, uh, they're about a 90 degree angle from the engine side because they have to go underneath, underneath a little cross member. So I'll show you what uh, that looks like when we're putting it on. And also note that I have about, I don't know, two and a half inches, maybe three inches of length uh, at the end because that allows me to slide the pipe onto the, uh, net, onto the, uh, sorry, the hoses onto the connecting pipes on the radiator and on the engine side here. All right, on the engine side, you'll notice the pipe that, it, that the hose connects to has a little uh, stop, I would call right there. And basically what you need to do is jam the pipe all the way in until it hits that stop. So we're gonna do that. Test fit the pipe, make sure you get the orientation correct. The orientation is actually like so. You see the pipe? You'll, it makes sense when you go do it. So. Jam it in all the way to the stop, nice and tight. Then take your, your uh, pliers and then uh, put the actual uh, spring hose clamp back on. All right, I got the hose pushed in all the way to the stop and just uh, tighten up, uh, sorry, just put the, the hose clamp up around the top to finish it off and hold it on there. And I have to get it up over that little dimple there. Found my uh, locking pliers were a better tool for that. Uh, so I'm just gonna use those. 
There we go. So there we got it just where about I, where I want it. You can see it's gone past that uh, lip on that pipe and now it's kind of loose, but here we're just gonna release it. Make sure we're beyond and we're nice and snug and we are. Nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Um, then we'll do the same on the top end with this hose clamp here. On the radiator side, it's basically the same procedure except there's no stop. It's the radiator that's the stop. So just push it in all the way until it stops on the radiator. There we go. That's as far as it'll go. And you can hear the system gurgling a little bit there. Same procedure with that uh, clip. Press it and slide it on. Careful not to get your fingers underneath it either. This thing, when if it let goes, lets go, it'll pinch and it won't be fun. Okay, so I've got the hose all the way in touching the radiator. I can feel the lip of the inlet pipe here. So I've got the, the snap ring or the uh, hose clamp uh, beyond that. So now we just release it and test it. Nice and solid on both sides, not going anywhere. Uh, next, we refill the, uh, uh, the lost uh, coolant and, uh, and then I'll show you how to check the levels on it afterwards. So I can't stress this enough. Make sure you're working on a cold engine. Don't ever open your coolant uh, uh, cap without having a cold engine. If you do this when it's hot, it's very dangerous. It's, it's, uh, it can burn you severely. So uh, mine is cool, so I'm just gonna remove the cap and I'm going to refill the system until it's full to the top here, more or less. Then uh, I'll, I'll uh, burp the pipe and get the air bubbles out of the system. You can see there that I got it slightly overfilled. Let me zoom in a little bit more. There we go. And what I'm gonna do next is squeeze that uh, radiator pipe, this one here, the new one, uh, the one we just put in. I'm gonna squeeze it with my hand and uh, burp the air out of it. Like that. I'm leaving the funnel in there for just to basically keep all the fluid from popping out of there, but you can see it rising in the funnel. I think we're full in that pipe. So at this point, I'm full in the radiator and All the air is out of that pipe that I'm going to get out by squeezing it anyway. So now we're going to replace the filler cap and I'll show you what you need to do next, which is check the radiator fluid on the radiator fluid tank and uh, something that you should do for a couple days after you do this, just to make sure that you, uh, you know, have the levels correctly and that you don't have any leaks because if you have a leak, you don't notice it, you can, you can ruin your engine. So we're on the passenger side of the car and you can see the reservoir here for coolant. It says engine coolant on the cap itself. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can read that or not, but you can see the color or the, the level here. It says low and full. There's two marks, F on the top, L on the bottom. Uh, if you can't see it clearly there, uh, I can, it's darker. Uh, just shine a flashlight next to it. And let me, there we go. And you can see the level much more clearly that way too, okay? So uh, top that up until it's on full. We'll do that. There it is topped up to the full mark. Uh, this is something you should monitor for a couple of days or a week. Uh, basically make sure that it stays on the full mark. You know, after the first day of driving, it may go down a little bit. It may change. It actually may go up, who knows? Uh, you know, there'll be air in the system and it needs to be uh, bled out. It'll bleed out on its own, but check this level uh, you know, for about a week, make sure it stays steady no matter where it lands and then top it up and then 
you know, peri periodically check and see if it's staying on the same level. It shouldn't get, uh, it should, when it's cold, it should always end up in the same place. Right now it's cold, it's on full. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's some air still in the system and that'll make it go down a little bit, but I don't expect it to go down much. It, it shouldn't go down much. And if it keeps draining on you, then you have another leak somewhere else or the uh, hose you put on is leaking somewhere. Check for a leak. That's the level and it should stay at the level you put it at. And last but not least, don't forget to put your engine cover back on and uh, secure the four bolts and then close your hood and you're done. There we go. And again, four bolts, one, two, three, and four. I wanna make a few small notes on this procedure. Um, number one, check the fluid levels. It's very, very uh, important that you do that on all your fluids, but after changing a radiator hose, your coolant levels are extremely important to have, keep an eye on. Now, it may drop a little bit in the first couple of days, so check your fluid level uh, in the morning. If it's low, just top it up. And in the second morning, if it's low again, top it up again. There may have been some air in the system. And, uh, you know, basically it, it just, uh, as the air, uh, you know, vents itself, fluid re replaces that. And so the, the level may go down a little bit. Now, after two days, if your level continues to go down, uh, I go looking for a, a, a leak in your system. And, uh, you know, and with me, but my indicator was a little puddle under the car. So, you know, you pretty well know if you, if you see coolant under the car, you've got a leak. That's note number one. Note number two, and by the way, you shouldn't have to keep refilling it. It should, once you've got it topped off, it should stay on full, uh, you know, indefinitely. Now, uh, second note, if the top hose has failed because of electrochemical degradation, then you know the lower hose is not too far behind in the same, you know, in having the same problem. So do yourself a favor and a little bit of pre preventative maintenance and order the lower hose for your vehicle after your top hose is, has gone because it's an indication. If either one of the hoses goes, the other one is not far behind. They both are subjected to the same heat, stress, and pressure. Uh, so they're probably, probably both likely to fail around the same time. And if they're original equipment like mine, uh, they were both put on the car at the same time. So they were both been on the car for the same length of time. So I'm ordering the lower uh, radiator hose to replace just to be safe. I know that, you know, it's going to go soon. And I live in Texas where the temperatures in the summer get extreme. And the last thing I want is to be broken down on the side of the road in one of those super hot 110 degree days. But regardless, you don't want to be broken down on the side of the road in any day. So Replace the lower hose, if, uh, you know, order the lower hose uh, if your top one went. I will be making a video on how to replace the lower hose on the Santa Fe, so you can wait and watch uh, me do that next. Now, anything I use in this video, supplies, uh, uh, tools, whatever, I'll put a link for it in the video description below, and you can go and, and click on those links. They'll be either for eBay or Amazon or wherever I got the tool. and. Uh, then you can get the same tool as I used in this uh, video, tool or supply or whatever it is. So if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button here in the bottom right hand corner and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. It helps my channel and it helps my videos. Uh, also somewhere here on the screen, you should see a picture of me and that'll be a link to subscribe to my channel just click on that link and then you'll be then you'll get a notification every time that i put a new video up and uh, you can watch it at your leisure once again like always i want to thank you for your time and for watching